have you ever considered asking AI to create a to-do list for you because you're feeling overwhelmed with all the things you have to do or you're experiencing fatigue and having to make these decisions? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple tool called Magic To-Do and how it could potentially help you in getting started in your to-do list so you're not struggling to succeed in completing your projects as the summer comes to an end and then, of course, into the academic school year. So let's go ahead and get a look at this tool. So here's the tool, and as you notice, it's very simple, nothing too fancy here, but I do think it's a good tool if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling decision fatigue, and you just want a starting point versus having to start from scratch, that blank page is getting to you, well, you can go ahead and try this out. So for example, the most important thing to remember here is on the right is the spiciness level, and so that's how much of a breakdown do you want it to give you, the AI, very basic or a lot of detail, right? So you have the range here. So let's say very basic, and you go ahead and write out your tasks. So what you need to do, maybe you need to write a lesson plan for a college English course. So you go ahead and click enter here, and you've created that task. Now, if you wanted to, if you want to keep this just like very, you know, lo-fi, you can go ahead and go here and you can create manual subtask yourself like okay and this is what you i need to do i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i'm going to do that so you can go ahead and add these manually uh, but of course the point here is to try out the ai tool so over here break down the item and so again it's breaking it down to that one level of spiciness and so here's what it gives you determine learning determine learning objectives select reading material create activities to engage students develop assessment methods determine lesson duration consider technology integration plan for class discussion, incorporate opportunities for student collaboration, include homework assignments, and review and revise the lesson plan. Okay, so this is the starting point. Now, you can move things around, so to determine learning objectives makes sense as a first task, and um, select reading material too, but maybe you're like, you know what, I wanna know what activities I'm assigning before I even choose the reading materials, because depending on the activities, that will influence what I assign to them to read. Okay, you can go ahead and click and drag it up, and now that task is before the next one. So you can reorganize to your heart's content. And again, if you wanna go ahead and like, hey, you're missing a task, I'm gonna click add subtask, you add the task here, and again, you can move it up to wherever it needs to appear. If you're like, you know what, I don't need to do that, you can go ahead and remove that task. When you're looking at these and you decide, you know what, I don't need to consider technology integration because it's all gonna be um, without any technology, it's just going to be paper and pens. I'm in a really rural area. We don't get internet, whatever. You can go ahead and remove an individual subtask. If you see this, you're like, you know what? Not for me. You can technically remove all of them. And again, manually add subtasks. So that's up here if you want to clear all of them at once. Okay. So you have that. Now, as you notice, there's still this breakdown level here too, right? On the individual tasks. So maybe you have determined learning objectives and you're like, okay, but how? Like, what should my steps be? Or then you could click the breakdown item for that individual subtask, right? And so now for determining learning objectives, you consider the goals and outcomes for the college English course lesson. You can identify the key points that students should understand about after completing the lesson plan, right? So it gives you more information here, right? So select or develop assessment methods. Okay, tell me more. Identify the objectives, determine appropriate type of assessment, create the criteria, develop the tools, and then align the assessment methods with the learning objectives, right? So you can keep going and going and going to uh, breaking down this more and more, right? So that's an option as well. You can minimize the subtask if you want to, to keep it a bit neater, right? So that's an option here as well, right? So that's this aspect of the AI. And again, we're here in the one level of spicy. Now, a couple things to show as well before we test a higher level of uh, breaking down. So other things that it does, right? So again, you can remove the task completely. You can clear all the subtasks. You can add subtask. You can edit what you've typed. It doesn't actually cause any change in what is below it, right? It's not gonna change it. If you click biology here, it doesn't change the list. It's always gonna be that. But you can change what you wrote if you want to. And then the one that I don't think is very useful is the time estimate. If you click it, it does give you um, 
an estimate of how much each how long each task will take and as you can see it's a bit finicky so let's go ahead it's thinking at the moment I guess because there's so many tasks there we go right so <laughs> as you can see it's like okay where are you getting these numbers from uh, so it breaks it down for you but it's just very strange right um, so develop the assessment methods is not going to take me 35 days to do uh, you can change how much this is like if you want to go down or up uh, but I just don't find it to be very useful and you can remove it if you decide the same you can just say clear estimate and you have to do that individually which is annoying but so that's what that does as well but again if you want to you can change this you know yourself and you can say okay I want to spend 45 minutes on this and I want to spend you know three hours on this and you know so on so that's all the elements here of, of what you can do now again this was one level of spiciness so let's go ahead and close this out and we're going to do five levels right so i'm going to give it the same prompt right a lesson plan for a college english course and now go ahead and do this so as you can see it has a lot more tasks than the first one did if i open up this first one here um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tasks. And again, they're very short, they're not very descriptive. Here we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 tasks. And they're much more specific of what you should be doing, right? Identify a specific topic or theme to be covered in the lesson plan. Determine the objectives for the lesson. Research materials and resources that will support it. Create an outline and so on. Right. And again, you can break this down further if you want to. So that's level five of spiciness. And so you can kind of just like test all five of them at, with the same prompt and see which level works best for you. OK, so this is, you know, the basics of this tool. Right. It can help you as a starting point in creating your to do list. Now, in this case, you might already have teaching experience. So you're like, all right, I want to see what it says. And then I'm going to tweak it with my own experience. But maybe you want to try something new. And that might be a reason to use this tool as well. Because maybe you want to start a side hustle, right? Um, and so you might have, like, write a business plan. Because you need, you know, uh, some starting money. And so you're going to ask you know, I don't know, family, friends, your spouse, whatever the case may be. So you want to have a plan in place, right? You want to go into business with somebody else. So you go here. I'm like, I've never written a business plan. So tell me in five levels of spiciness, what do I do? And then it has this list, right? So it can be a starting point. You might decide, wow, that is overwhelming. I, that's too many details. Let's do a two here. And now we break down again, and now we have here, right? So not as many steps, kind of keeping it a bit simpler as a starting point, okay? So you can just kind of think about, you know, maybe you are starting your dissertation process, and again, you're not really sure, like, okay, where do I get started, right? So write a dissertation chapter, and let's do level three. All right, so you have this, choose a topic, conduct research, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, well, give me more about choosing a topic, right? And so now we do this one, okay? Uh, so I do think it can be an interesting tool to try out if you're feeling that overwhelm or decision fatigue. And again, you have this list here, you can move them around uh, depending on what's you know of more importance and you open and close it as you are working on them. You go ahead and click when certain things are done so you know what to move on to. And so it just kind of keeps it really simple here. Uh, nothing too fancy, but I thought it might be of interest. A couple of things to point out on the bottom here, you can see these little tools as well. So actually, if you do want to do bulk changes, I had mentioned the clearing of estimates is annoying. If you go here, you can say clear all estimates. You can clear all completed tasks, so you just have what's left. So you can have mark all as not completed. Yeah, so you can just do, you know, a lot of heavier lifting with this one instead, right? So clear all estimates. We'll do it across all of your tasks here, okay? Um, you can also filter here. 
Uh, so for example, it gives you little icons based off what you ask of it. So maybe you only want to look at your business ones or you only want to look at this, this you know, graduation cap one. So you kind of have to see like what it gave and then you can filter with those instead. And on the left here, you see this option. If you open this up, you can save it as a file on your computer. And then let's say later on you open this somewhere else, you can load from that saved file, right? And then it will appear back on the website. So you can go ahead and print it. You can export it to do to doist to your icon file, right? So there are options here of how to save it to make sure you don't lose your work, right? So just a few extra tool settings here. If you want my thoughts on how to create a course plan rather than an AI tool, then go ahead and check out my successful start series. It's a series of five videos and five blog posts. There's also a free workbook that's over 60 pages long and it breaks down how to design a college course, specifically a college literature course. And so if that's something that intrigues you, I'll go ahead and link it below for you to access. And so I'll see you next time. If you have your own AI tool that you love using or you want me to check out and review here on this channel, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Click like if you found this video helpful and subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on future content. I'll see you next time.